<coughs> now coming on to vitamin B12. The daily requirement, as we have already discussed, depends on the age, the activity, and the and the status, the body status. Like it increases the requirement, increases in pregnancy and breastfeeding. Next slide. Now, the food sources of vitamin B12 are very important. Important why? Because the vitamin B12 is absent in the plant sources. We get it only from the animal foods like eggs, fish, meat, and poultry. So patients who are vegetarian, anybody coming with anemia and who is vegetarian, we must keep a diagnosis of B12 deficiency in our mind. Next slide. Causes of B12 deficiency can be classified as malabsorption or dietary deficiency. Malabsorption can further be associated with atrophic gastritis, pernicious anemia, conditions affecting the small intestine like Crohn's disease, celiac disease or bacterial overgrowth. Even heavy drinking can be associated with deficiency of vitamin B12. Next slide. Then there are certain medications which also interfere with the absorption of vitamin B12 like proton pump inhibitors or even H2 blockers. What they do is they reduce the gastric acid which is needed for the absorption of vitamin B12. Even medicines like metformin have been seen to be associated with decreased vitamin B12 absorption. Next It has been found that the prolonged use of metformin can cause vitamin B12 deficiency because it prevents the absorption of vitamin B12 from the idea. So any diabetic patient who is on regular metformin for a very long time, we must monitor vitamin B12 in the patient. Vitamin B12 deficiency patients usually will present either as megaloblastic anemia or they can have symptoms of peripheral neuropathy and even some bowel symptoms like altered bowel motility or impaired immune response or even low mineral dense, bone mineral density. Next. If we look at the blood picture in B12 deficiency, we will have anemia that is mainly a macrocytic type. Macrocytic means MCV more than 100. They may have leukopenia or thrombocytopenia, low reticulocyte count, and hypersegmented neutrophils. Hypersegmented means neutrophils with more than five nodes. So these are all usually seen in patients with vitamin B12 deficiency. Next slide. <clears throat> now coming on to the treatment, we can supplement vitamin B12 orally as well as parenterally. Usually uh, if the patient, for patients who are symptomatic, they have severe symptomatic anemia or neurological findings, we try to give parenteral administration and once stabilized, we can switch to oral therapy. Next slide. Now in the parenteral administration, we, uh, as you all know, we give either a weekly injection or an alternate day injection depending upon the preparation. And once they are stable, we shift to oral. Oral, we usually give everyday therapy about 1000 to 1500 micrograms orally once per day. Oral dosing is equally effective as intravenous dosing if the patient has normal absorption. Next slide. There are various therapeutic preparations that are available, usually in the form of, it is available as either a cyanocobalamin or hydroxycobalamin. Both are equally effective in treating vitamin B12 deficiency. There is some difference in their pharmacokinetics like hydroxycobalamin, it is administered less frequently as compared to cyanocobalamin. The duration of therapy will depend upon the cause. Some causes may need even lifelong replacement, like if there is pernicious anemia or there is gastric bypass surgery. For the other causes, we can discontinue supplementation once the deficiency is correct. Next slide. Once we have treated, we need to monitor the response to the treatment. For this, we can find in the blood picture an initial reticulocytosis response, which usually occurs over one to two weeks, then followed by resolution of anemia occurring in four to eight weeks. The neuropsychiatric uh, changes, they the resolution takes a little longer time and sometimes it may be even incomplete. 